Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois, and this video today is going to take a look at converting a decimal number, like say 2.65 or something like that, any number that has a decimal point, and converting it into its IEEE 754 standard floating point value, or some kind of floating point value in binary. So just for example here, trying to convert 2.625, positive 2.625, into 8-bit binary using one sign bit, three exponent bits, and four fractional bits. So right away, uh, we'll go into, I'll set up a, so here it is right now, where is my Excel worksheet? There it is. And so um, what we can do, I can just go ahead and put 2.625 into here, and this already generates the pure binary for me. And if you need to understand those kind of th this kind of part, the previous lectures will, will actually explain that to you much better than this can. Um, so uh, I think it can anyway. So let's just kind of get to it here. So first thing I need to do to get going with this is know that it's a positive number, so that sign bit's going to be a zero. So okay, I got one of my eight bits right off the bat. And so from there, then, the exponent and the mantissa, I have to actually do some work to figure out, obviously, right? So I can put 2.625 into my little handy spreadsheet. You can do the math yourself. I mean, 2 just resolves down to 1, 0, and then this little here right here represents a dot. And then 0.625 is 5 eighths. So this is 5 eighths in binary, because this is a half plus an eighth. And so it's 1.101. Which is what you see here, 10.101. And so what I can do, that's step one, is to convert that number into binary. And then step two, add the times two to the zeroth power, because any number two to the zeroth power is one. So ten point or 2.625 times 1 is 2.625, so that's fine. And then what we do is we move the decimal point over until we have basically a, you know, a binary scientific notation value. So in this case, I only have to move this thing over one to the left to make it a one point something. And that's what we're looking for, just one point something. Every number but zero in binary will end up with a one point something because every other value has a one somewhere in its number. And so I've shifted everything over one time. And so that's all there is to it now, and now from here I can figure out the rest. So as I was saying before here, zero is the sign, so zero gets put down here. And so now I just have to check to see if there's any typos in here. But now what I can do is I can just take, I can hack off that one point, the one dot, and everything else starts getting jammed into the fractional component. So the 0, 1, 0, 1 gets jammed in here, and if there's, you know, you just cut it off where you can. And so well, in this case, it's perfect. It fits perfectly, 0, 1, 0, 1. And so that handles the fractional, or the x, no, the fractional part. And then so now the exponent part, that's where get, things get a little tricky for students, especially the first couple times doing this. And because it all comes down to this term, this bias term, and it all comes down to how many bits are set aside for the bias term, because and then that determines what I'm adding to my number. So I take my one, that's the power, that's my exponent, and I add this bias term to it. And the bias term is always listed as two to the n minus one power minus one. So in this case, it's two to the three minus one power, or two squared minus one. So my bias is three. And that will always be the case for a three-bit exponent. And we'll see cases here, it's a different number for different exponents. It's not like it's three or five. It's there, That formula is followed here. So I take my one, which is the, the power, I add my three to it, and I get four, and I just convert that into binary, one, zero, zero, and I jam it in, and there I go. And that is the exact answer, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, correctly formatted with my sign bit, my exponent, and my fractional. And again, once you've done this a few times for the different formats, you can handle this. It's just every every single person, me included, the first couple times we did this is like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? But the IEEE standard is very, very straightforward for all of these different types of uh, exponent and fractional components. So taking negative 4.75, well the sign will be a one this time because it's negative, but the same deal goes. I'm not gonna fire up that uh, 
that uh, Excel worksheet of mine, but you can see 4.75 works out to 100.11. And now this time I got to shift over twice to get from two, two times, you know, from times two to the zeroth power, I shift over twice to get two squared. And so again, it's a negative value. So there's a sign bit of one. The uh, zero, zero, one, one gets jammed in here as the fractional component. And I use the power of two this time. The Again, the exponent is exactly the same because it's three bits of storage for it. So two plus three is five. Put five in binary in the last three bits or in the middle three bits, and there you go. One, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. So just keep on going then. Negative 12.0. Because uh, I could represent this as an integer, but I'm trying to represent it as a float, which is going to be a completely different representation. So 1100.0, we're going to put a 1 up front because it's negative. So 1100.0, and so just move the decimal point over three times this time. And so 1000 goes in the fractional part here, 1 goes in the sign part. And so we just take the three, which is the bias, we add it to the exponent here, which is three, you get six, you jam it in, you got yourself a deal, right? So one, 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 zero, one, zero, 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 tie it all together. I think there's one more, yep. This is where things get a little trickier. So like uh, 1.7. So, because you know, as, as we say, many numbers are irrational in binary. If the denominator of the fraction is not a power of two, you're going to have a you're going to have an error term. It's, you're never going to be able to have it exactly perfect in binary. Even if I gave you an infinite number of bits, you'll get closer and closer, but you'll never get there. And this just shows that off. So 1.7, and so. It, it's irrational. I could go on forever doing one point, you know, blah, 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 whatever the numbers are, zeros and ones across the board forever. But I stopped because I can only take four of those bits, right? I mean, so there's no reason to keep on going. So 1.1011 1, is what I, what I have times two to the zero. I don't shift this thing at all because I'm already at one dot something. So my power is zero. And so I'm dealing with a positive number. So I put a zero here. I am moving myself over for you after all this time. Sorry about that. So I'm dealing with this. So my sign bit is one or zero. Uh, the the fractional part is one zero one one. That goes here, and then zero plus three because that's my bias. One last time is three, and so I have myself the whole number. But now. Like I said, this is the best I can do. And if you work your way backwards, you find out that this is actually 1.6875. So, you know, this is an 8-bit number. There's only 256 possible numbers that I could try to represent every number from negative infinity to positive infinity. So it gets tricky, that, you know, like what number is that? So in this case, the error term isn't too bad. But for a lot of other cases, the error term will be humongous. I don't remember what the largest and smallest numbers are, but you can imagine anything larger or smaller than that, it's going to cause a huger and huger problem. And so this is why we use 32 bits or 64 bits or 80 bits for these kind of numbers, because then I can have a hugely large uh, uh, amount of numbers that I can be rep that can be represented. And even so, trying to represent an infinity of numbers it's never going to work. Even if I have, you know, like you give me 64 bits or 128 bits. I mean, in, in, again, it's an infinite number of numbers that are in mathematics, right? And, and it's not possible that I could go ahead and represent every single one of them exactly using binary. The final examples here, the final four examples, change things up a little bit. So this is the official IEEE 754 standard for float, which is 32 bits of storage total, one sign bit, eight bits for exponent, and 23 bits for the fractional component. So things change quite a bit here, but a little bit, but not as much as you might expect. So positive 3.75. You know we're going to put a zero here for the sign bit, and everything else is up for grabs. So let's take a look. So 3.75 is 11.11 in binary. That's it, right? So add the times two to the zero with power. Move everything over one. Move the decimal point over one place to get me to 1.111 times two to the first power. Okay, and now we have everything else we need. This s is zero because it's positive, and then we start filling in. And so there's 23 bits for the fractional component. And we're only going to need the first three, and then we just fill everything else with zeros. So there's 20 zeros that follow the three ones because, you know, in this case, you know, just like if you had 
2.5, well, it's just equivalent to 2.5000000, something like that. And so like, in this case, we need to fill these things in with zeros. And so, and then as before, we take a bias term and we add that to this one, which is our exponent. But the only big, big difference here is the, the bias term has changed because I'm allowing eight bits for that value instead of three in those previous examples. So two to the eight minus one minus one, two to the seventh minus one power, my bias is going to be 127 for anything that uses eight bits for the exponent part. So I take 127, I add one to it, I get 128, and I fill in the eight bits of storage with 128, and that's what you get. And it's one of those things, you can try it out yourself. You could try to put this number into C++ or Java and see what it spits out as a, as a number in, you know, it, it, in a, in, or go online and put this number in and try to convert it. And I prove, and I guarantee to you that I've proven here that this is the 32-bit IEEE standard for 3.75. And so everything else just kind of comes with just more complicated examples. So 1313.3125, all I know is up front from without doing any math is that the first bit's going to be a 1 because it's negative. But everything else applies. It's a huge number, a lot of bits to get me to 1313. 0.3125 is what, 3 sixteenths or 5 sixteenths there. So there's 5 sixteenths in binary. Same rules apply. Put the decimal point in, put a time, you know, 2 to the 0 power, move the decimal place over. I have to do it 10 times here to make it 1 point something, and now I have everything else I need to fill in the gaps. So 1 for the negative value, 0, 1, blah, 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 and then I fill in with zeros when I reach the end, and I just keep on going until I hit 23 total digits, and then I take my 10, I add 127, it's the same bias to it, and I get 137, and I convert that into binary and jam it in the spots there. So it's just repeating, repeating, repeating kind of stuff. Last problem, same kind of stuff, just much more complicated, larger number. So 39887.5625, again, sign bit, all I know is it's going to be a zero. And so taking this number, here it is, converted into binary. So 0 0.5625 is 9 sixteenths in this case. And so here, and this is 39,887. And so I need to put the times 2 to the 0, shift this thing over, in this case, 15 spots to get over to have it to be a one dot something. And then again, the sign bit is zero. The fractional component, here we go, zero, zero, one, one, blah, 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 with just a couple zeros at the end this time, because there's a lot of digits there. And then times two to the 15th, so 127 plus 15 gets me 142. And 142 gets me 128 plus 14. And there you go, we have ourselves our IE standard. And so that pretty much covers, I say, like a lot of work. It's a lot of arithmetic, a lot of tedious work. Thank goodness the computer can do this for us without any issue. Just in, But you can imagine it takes quite a few clock cycles for this thing to do this. It's not a free operation, right? You static cast from int to float. It still has to convert a variable number, any number, into its IEEE 754 equivalent or its closest equivalent. So it takes a ton of clock cycles for the computer to do this work. So be careful with that. So if you can help it, avoid the implicit and explicit castings to make these things uh, turn from type A to type B. So thanks for sticking with me. If you have any questions, as always, swordb at cod.edu is my email address. Put a comment down here. Don't be like these people that say, loved it. Like, all these bots and all this stuff. Be a real person and send me a real message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for sticking with it. Have a nice day, everyone.